Welcome to Dash and Dish. It's movie night at the Farrells, and it wouldn't be a movie without something salty and sweet to munch on. The snacks include crispy on the outside but chewy on the inside gluten-free pretzel bites, skinny supreme nachos that are a great snack or meal, and a healthy spin on a classic candy, our Snickers Shake. It's movie night with all the snacks that we crave, coming up next. Tonight's movie night at home, and it would not be movie night without something crunchy and salty and sweet to snack on. And so we're gonna make a healthy version of puppy chow, and if you've never had puppy chow, basically it's the most addicting, wonderful snack that you've ever tried, because it has peanut butter, chocolate, and the original recipe calls for powdered sugar, but I'm gonna show you how we made it a little bit healthier. So we're gonna start with some rice cereal, and if you wanted to really take it a different dimension of nutritious. You could always do some brown rice cereal or just anything that you can find like granola. But we're just gonna do the plain old rice cereal and we're gonna put a few healthy spins by instead of doing powdered sugar, we have protein powder here. We also, instead of all of the peanut butter that you would traditionally add to this recipe, are gonna swap some out with some peanut flour. So peanut flour is basically just a dry form of peanut butter with some of the fat taken out. So it's basically a lower calorie peanut butter. So a little secret for you, go find some peanut flour if you love peanut butter. Then one tablespoon of cocoa powder. I'm just gonna kinda mix this all together in a little bowl. And then we have a half cup of sweetener. And you can use any kind of sweetener you like. I like to use monk fruit sweetener because it's granulated so it tastes pretty similar to actual sugar but it's better for you. Then I have melted in a bowl one half cup of chocolate chips and a fourth cup of any kind of nut butter that you like. And I just melted it in the microwave for about 30 seconds to about 60 until everything is melted. And then you just stir it until it's creamy. And I'm gonna go ahead and pour this delicious decadent chocolate peanut butter melted goodness over the cereal. And I just have my cereal in a Ziploc bag just to make it easy. And this is the traditional way of making puppy chow, is just putting it into a Ziploc bag because then you can just shake it up. You can kind of use your hands to kind of mix it around. And you just wanna get all of the cereal coated in the chocolate peanut butter mixture, the best that you can. You could also just do this in a large mixing bowl where you're just stirring it all up, just to get the cereal coated is all you're really looking for. Then I'm gonna take my dry mixture and I'm gonna kinda of give it a little mix or a shake. And I remember making this recipe with my mom when I was growing up. Of course we used powdered sugar instead of protein powder. But my job was always to shake up the Ziploc bag. And it's one of my favorite things to give Maddie to do because I just basically zip up the Ziploc bag and then it's nice and clean and tidy and she just shakes away. And she thinks she's contributing. And then it was that simple. You just wanna kinda make sure everything is coated in the wet and the dry mixture. And then we're gonna kind of spread it out over a pan that I lined with parchment paper just for easy cleanup. And then you can enjoy it just as is because trust me, it's delicious like this. Or you can let it kind of air dry for about 30 minutes until the chocolate kind of hardens up a little bit. And it's absolutely delicious and will be perfect for movie night. My husband, Sean, has always been an avid movie fan. We started dating at the age of 16 and we would go to the movies together almost every weekend. When I was pregnant with Maddie, I asked Sean if he had anything specific that he had hoped to enjoy with her when she was born. It only took moments for him to respond. Oh yes, I've already been praying about two specific things, he said. 
First, I prayed that she would enjoy playing golf with me, of course. And second, I prayed that she would be my movie buddy. Once Maddie was born, it didn't take long for Sean to settle in to his new role as a dad. In fact, I'm pretty sure one of the first things he did when he brought her home was tuck her in his arms and watch a movie with her. One of the highlights of Sean's movie-going experiences was when Toy Story 4 came out. Sean took Maddie to see her first movies in the theater, and it also happened to be their first daddy-daughter date. Sean wasn't quite sure how she would do, considering that she was only two at the time, but he soon realized that she was just what he had hoped for, the best little movie buddy, sitting quietly and content, wrapped up cozy in his arms. Aside from popcorn, I think that pretzel bites are one of the most popular movie snacks. And today I'm gonna make some soft pretzel bites that are not only delicious and easy to make at home, but also good for you. So I'm gonna start by making the dough and I'll show you how I made it. To make the dough, I started by adding the dry ingredients to a large mixing bowl, which includes two and two third cup oat flour, one teaspoon of salt, one tablespoon of baking powder, and one teaspoon of baking soda. I stirred everything together until it was combined, and then I added two cups of plain Greek yogurt. I mixed everything together until the mixture started to form into a dough. I placed the dough on a clean surface and continued to work the dough until it came together into a ball. All right, well my husband Sean, the greatest movie fan of all time, is here with me in the kitchen today. And we're gonna be celebrating a nice little movie night at home. Ooh. And so we're making our pretzel dough bites and these are so simple. The dough is already made, so we're just gonna be kind of finishing them off. And there's one simple step that brings out that crunchy texture on the outside and makes them chewy on the inside, which is what we all love about pretzel bites. Yeah. So I'm gonna show you how we do that. But first, I'm gonna have you take the dough, we already okay. rolled it out, and just cut it with a knife, kind of like in long strips and then okay. in cubes. How, how thick, you think? So maybe just about a half of an inch. Okay. So just like you would think of a pretzel bite, however big or small, just try and make them uniform in size. And then when you're done, cutting those, then I will dip them into our water. We have eight cups of boiling water here, and we have a third cup of baking soda. So I'm gonna dump this baking soda in the water, and you wanna be careful, you wanna really underfill the pot because it will kind of bubble up a little bit, you'll see here. Wow. So once the water is brought to a boil, you can add your baking soda to the water. And so this baking soda water concoction here is what's gonna bring out the texture on the outside of the pretzel bites that make them crunchy and then soft on the inside. So Sean, sticky. those look great. And if it's too sticky, we have some extra oat flour. You can kind of sprinkle it on. Also make sure that the dough is cold. If it's cold, then it's gonna be easier to cut, kind of like cookie dough. Is that better? Yep. So I'm gonna take a slotted spoon, and you could use a bigger one so you can do multiple at a time, and I'm just gonna kind of dip them in just for about five to 10 seconds. You don't wanna dredge it in the water, you just wanna lightly dip it, and just enough to coat the pretzel bite. Then I'm gonna place each pretzel bite onto our parchment paper lined pan here. Okay, I think that's good. Any type of slotted spoon is great. You don't want them this, to be too wet. Are these ones too big? Nope, those are perfect. Okay. And then, Sean, I'm gonna have you take the egg wash, okay. which is just one egg that's been beaten, and kind of brush, brush the tops of just these. Just the tops? Just the ones that I've already dipped oh, okay. in the water here. Okay. Yep. And so what that egg wash is gonna do is it's gonna make the tops of these pretzel bites lightly golden brown. Just like that? And that looks perfect. Okay. And then I have some sesame seeds over there. And you can, after you do the egg wash, you can kind of use the sesame okay. seeds do to do all of them? kind of sprinkle them. Um, yeah, you can, but after I'm done, okay. Yep, kind of go, do them as I go. So Sean, you are a huge movie fan, probably the biggest that I know. Yeah. So I got to ask you two important questions. Oh boy. First okay. of all, all of America wants to know, what is your favorite movie? Oh gosh, favorite movie. I only get to pick one. Just one. Like if you could only watch one movie for the rest of your life for all time, what would it be? Uh, that's a really hard question. I, I'd have to go with probably Castaway. <laughs> is that? So you're going with the True Island I'm theme because Tom, this I'm, is a huge, little, I'm a huge Tom Hanks fan. It's the film. last movie you'll ever watch. If it's the last movie, I can I can relate to him the whole time. Okay, that's so. true. That's a good point. It's a great movie. 
I know you're wondering what my favorite movie is. I think I might know it, but yeah, I want to hear it. Well, you already know I love Rachel McAdams yep, or any favorite. kind of romance film. Yeah. Any other any other girls out there understand where I'm coming from? So I would say probably Notebook because it's just a great love story, and I think I cry every single time. But um, yeah, any kind of romance film, and I, I also have to know since we're talking about favorite, what's your favorite movie snack? Oh, that's that's a tough one too. I always I have two. I always go between Bunch of Crunch or uh, Snow Caps. And I think mine would probably be the puppy chow that I made earlier that we'll be having in just a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna have you continue to just top these with sesame seeds until they're all coated. And you could use sesame seeds, you could use everything bagel seasoning if you that sounds good to you. You could do cinnamon and sugar mixture. Oh, that nice. Anything that you would like on pretzels. So I'm gonna pop these into the oven, 425 degrees for 15 minutes, and they'll be golden brown and delicious. Along with movies often come snacks and soft drinks, but they aren't necessarily the best for our health. So a better choice includes something like a fruit infused water or sparkling water, or even a cold brew coffee or tea. Choosing swap outs without the sugar is an easy way to save on hundreds of excess calories. Coming up next, who doesn't love nachos? So easy, so good, with my skinny nacho supreme. The recipes from today's program are available at dashingdish.com. With thousands of delicious, clean eating recipes, hundreds of easy to follow workouts, plus a custom grocery list and meal planning tools, there's plenty to love about the Dashing Dish membership. Start your free two week trial today using code CTBN at checkout. Find everything you need for your journey to health with a Dashing Dish membership. Use code CTBN at checkout and start your free two week trial today. All right, so movie night typically calls for snacking, but sometimes you actually need something that will satisfy you and really fill you up. And tonight we're having this as kind of our dinner slash evening plan. So this will be kind of our staple meal. And what could be better than crispy, salty nachos? Sounds good. So Not Some nachos. So we're gonna make our own chips and we're gonna do that with corn tortillas. So you okay. can use kind of any tortillas that you like if you wanna find whole grain or corn. Um, that's what we're using and we're just gonna bake them instead of fry them. And it's so simple, you don't even need to buy chips. You make them right at home, 15 minutes. So we're gonna, I'll have you take the corn tortillas, okay. put them on the cutting board and just kind of cut them into fours. Okay. You can do a few at a time. Okay. And then you can put them onto a baking pan. And I'm gonna make the meat. This, this is kind of a supreme nacho thing that we have going here. So I'm gonna start with one pound of ground meat. And you could do ground beef, ground turkey, ground chicken, anything you like. I'm gonna dump it directly into the crock pot. This recipe is amazing because the crock pot does all the work for you. And if you've ever thought, don't you need to brown meat first before putting it in the crock pot? No, you actually don't. In fact, I like to do this a lot when it comes to marinara sauces with meat. Anything that I'm making with meat in the crock pot, all you have to do is kind of break it up beforehand. And if you turn it on high for the first hour of cooking and kind of just break it up after that and then set it to whatever heat, whether low or high after that, it'll just kind of cook perfectly all on its own. So it's one less pan that you have to dirty. Then I have some taco sauce, about a fourth cup of taco sauce. Those look good, Sean. I think we have enough there. We just okay. want enough to kind of fill the pan. Okay. Just like when you think of nachos. And then I'm gonna hand you this cooking spray and I'll have you spray those really well. Kind of flip them too and get both sides. Okay. The cooking spray will just help them crisp up. Then I'm gonna make my own taco seasoning, but you could just add a pack of taco seasoning too. So one tablespoon of cumin, about a tablespoon, one teaspoon of garlic powder, a teaspoon of chili powder, about a fourth teaspoon of oregano, and a half teaspoon of salt. And Sean, I'll just have you put a little bit of paprika and some salt. So you can kind of just okay. eyeball it. So the paprika and the salt are optional. You can use whatever kind of seasoning you'd like. And then I'm just gonna stir the seasoning into our taco meat. Just how much is it? 
just kind of eyeball it. So okay. just kind of sprinkle it over. And I like paprika and salt for chips. Maybe a little salty on that side. <laughs> It's okay, we can kind of shake that one off there. <laughs> and I like using paprika and salt for chips because the paprika gives a nice smoky flavor but also a really pretty color. I'm not talented enough to do this part. That looks yeah. great. <laughs> and so then this meat mixture looks great and I'm just gonna cover it now and I'm gonna turn it to high and then I'm gonna kind of break it up after one hour. I'm gonna set it for another two to three hours on high until it's totally tender and delicious. We're gonna bake these chips 425 degrees for about 15 minutes. You could also do a lower setting if you're afraid of burning them. I've burned them before, so like 350 for a little bit longer, maybe 20 to 25 minutes. And that will be crispy and delicious. Then when the meat is done cooking, we're gonna top the crispy chips with the meat and then any kind of topping you like. So what do you like on your nachos? I know I'm, you like I'm cheese basic. I like and just meat. cheese. That's, yeah. cheese that's is about good. it. But I would do probably half of these nachos with some olives. You could do jalapenos. Anything that you like on nachos. And so you just top that while while they're warm and the cheese will melt right on top and they'll be gooey gooey delicious. Sounds good. And so I have to ask you, what is your favorite thing about going to the movies? Because movies. now that we have a toddler, we don't get to go as often as we'd like. <laughs> just going to the movies is a treat now. But um, I'd have to say probably just the experience. I mean, just having the big screen and the people and the cheering, that's my favorite part, yeah. It's true, but even so, when we do it at home and we do it like this, it truly is a special date night. So yes. let's get these chips in the oven, our meat started, and then we can go enjoy those snacks and get watching our movie. Sounds good. Much like the action scenes of a movie draw us in, our faith put into action has the potential to draw people to Jesus. Even more than we say, I believe that the world is greatly impacted by what we do. If we look to Jesus as our example, we can see that his faith was demonstrated through action, and because of it, people were drawn to his heavenly Father. Likewise, our actions have the potential to point people back to God. James 2 verse 14 tells us that faith apart from works is essentially useless, and although our works alone won't save us, being a doer of the word speaks volumes about what we believe. So now there are just two things that we're missing for this movie night and then we're ready to get started and that is a drink and of course some candy. So I'm gonna put them both together into what I like to think of as a Snickers milkshake, but really it's kind of like a protein shake because it has added protein with some protein powder, peanut flour, and even my favorite secret ingredient for shakes, which is cottage cheese. Now, before you think to yourself, that sounds disgusting, cottage cheese in a shake, I would recommend trying it. Once you blend it up, you don't even know what's in there, but it gives it that creamy texture that really you're looking for when it comes to any kind of milkshake. So I'm gonna double this recipe. The original is just for one, but since it's me and my husband, I'm gonna double it today and I'm gonna do one cup of cottage cheese. And you can also use a frozen banana that's sliced up instead of the cottage cheese or one cup of plain Greek yogurt. Put that in the bottom of the blender before the ice because I find that that helps everything kind of blend easier. Then I'm gonna do about a cup of ice. I just usually eyeball it until it looks like it's gonna be good for my shake and you can always add more later. Then I have a scoop of protein powder. I have a fourth cup of peanut flour just about a tablespoon or so of sweetener, and then some cocoa powder. So the peanut flour, the cocoa powder is what gives it the peanut butter, the chocolate of what we think of a Snickers bar or a candy bar. And then I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of caramel extract. So that's where you get the caramel flavor that you would expect in a candy bar. Then I'm just gonna add my liquid, which is almond milk, but you could use water, you could use regular milk, whatever you choose. I like almond milk because it's a non-dairy form of liquid that's really low calorie and also nutritious, and it also gives the shake a really creamy texture. So then I'm just gonna pop the lid on and I'm gonna give it a blend. Okay, that looks good. 
Now I'm just gonna pour it into two glasses that look cute, almost like milkshake jars. And you can see how wonderful and creamy and thick that is. It's absolutely perfect and it will be perfect for movie night. And what I love about this shake is that it has about 50 grams of protein versus a candy bar that has about 50 grams of sugar. It also has just about 200 calories per glass versus anywhere from 500 to 800 calories for a large soda. So this will be delicious and a wonderful way to celebrate and start our movie night. Coming up next, it's movie night at home and I can't wait to relax with my husband Sean and great food. Walking out our faith begins with time spent with the Lord, and putting our faith into action is the next step, as we listen and obey what God speaks to our hearts. All right, well, we're all set for our movie night. I know you already have one picked out. Yep. So we have our Snickers shake, we have puppy chow, pretzel bites, nachos, and of course popcorn. So I think we're all set. I think so. This is one of my favorite things to do with you. This is my favorite thing to do with you as well. I can't wait to dive in. Do you know what you're gonna have? Definitely going for the puppy chow. All right, I think I'm gonna have some pretzel bites. So for more recipes just like this, head over to dashingdish.com where you'll find recipes and more to nourish your body and soul. And so we're gonna make a healthy version of pop, pop. They feel like they're contributing, but really they're just shaking a nice controlled substance in a bag. That yeah, sounded funny. <laughs> Yeah. And instead of sesame seeds, you could also go ahead. Okay. Whoa, that comes so fast. How many got? Is that too much? <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna have you top these with sesame seeds. Go ahead. Okay. And just gently. I'm trying to make a clean break for Rob, but it's not working. <laughs> well, they're coming out quick. I couldn't. I tried so hard not to laugh. Okay. Oh. Okay. So coming back. <laughs> <laughs>